Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tippet for Thursday evening, September 15th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, it's the peak time of the Atlantic hurricane season, and accordingly, we do have a few things to discuss. Some storms are active. Uh, this is a tropical storm, Julia which kind of surprised us over Florida a few days ago and uh, came up, developed, moved offshore, and is now pushing away from the southeast U.S. coast after dropping a few inches of rain over portions of Georgia and South Carolina. There was a flooding threat there. That has now mostly ended as uh, this thing has been sheared off toward the east uh, with westerly winds aloft pushing these thunderstorms to the east side of the circulation, which means it's all offshore now. And uh, this is expected to meander around for a few days, but not likely to bring much more weather to the coast given the way it looks now. Uh, this is the GFS showing that this big blocking high is up here to the north, really preventing it from escaping out anywhere uh, quickly. And as we go forward in time, you'll see that the storm just kind of meanders down here off the coast for the next two days. And this is out to three days on Sunday afternoon, still sitting here and, and could get close to the southeast coast again, and perhaps eventually move somewhere into the coast here and bring some showers with it, but it is uh, largely expected to dissipate by most of the models uh, given the shear that will remain over it for the foreseeable future. So chances are it will probably dissipate in place here while meandering slowly, and that's what the National Hurricane Center forecast has. Um, good luck trying to connect the dots here. You're not going to be able to do it. It's just basically sitting in here for the next while, moving around, drifting. Again, an occasional shower may make it back to the coast in association with this, but most of the threat from this storm is likely gone. We also briefly have another system in the northwestern Gulf, uh, something the National Hurricane Center only gives a 10% chance of developing. Uh, this is a, a little circulation here that has been uh, moving around slowly, and uh, we all know what can happen in the Gulf uh, with these kind of systems. They can sneak up uh, on the coastline and develop in a hurry. Uh, this one probably won't do that though. Most of the convection is a little bit offset to the east of where the low level circulation center is over here and the mid-level guts of this from the old convective burst yesterday are way over here. So the mid-level lows here, low level lows here. We went through this with Hermine. When this happens, uh, very difficult to get any kind of development with these weak systems and this doesn't seem like it's very coupled and it will likely just move slowly into the Texas coast over the next day or so. Could bring some rain over to this region, uh, but other than that, not expected to develop tropically. The uh, big story for the next while is probably going to be Tropical Depression 12 here, which could become Tropical Storm Carl eventually, but right now uh, we can see the circulation center was exposed earlier today. A nice burst of convection going on on the eastern side of the storm tonight. It has actually overshadowed the circulation center this evening. We'll have to see if that lasts. It may not, given that there's this upper level trough to the north here, which is imparting some southwesterly winds aloft over the system. We can see that a little bit better in the water vapor imagery here. Let me speed that up for you. Uh, there's this trough that you might be able to make out here, and you can see this wind coming out of the southwest, again, shearing the system out of the west, and that's going to be an issue for the next day or two, and then it may uh, lighten up as the system moves toward the west, and eventually conditions could become more favorable, but there's a lot of traffic in its way. We have an upper level low here, the trough it's dealing with now. Here's another trough. Here's another upper low. Uh, lots of stuff that it has to get through, and the models generally have a hard time forecasting this kind of a complex upper level pattern days in advance, and so we're talking about another five or six days before it gets into this area, and at that point it will be a little difficult to know what kind of conditions it will have in front of it. We'll have to see if that shear lightens up by that time. But if it does, it may have a better chance uh, to strengthen later because when you look at the circulation now, it's very well defined, very circular and symmetric. You see west winds on the south side uh, a, a long distance from where the center is up here. And uh, this is the kind of uh, system that we've talked about before. Hermine was of this type, these large circular circulations that even if they lack thunderstorm activity, have the inertia to survive for a very long uh, time on their journey westward until they reach conditions that are more conducive for development. And that's probably what's going to happen here unless something funny happens with this burst tonight and we see it start strengthening now. Uh, most of the models keep it weak 
over the next few days. And what happens with these things is that they eventually get away from the shear, away from all the dry air up here in the northeastern Atlantic that you can see here, and into warmer uh, ocean temperatures. Right now the system is pretty far north and in marginally uh, cool temperatures relative to what TCs normally like to have. But as this comes farther west here, you note how the, the water quickly gets warmer as it gets closer to 50 west and 60 west. And that couple degrees of warming in the water can make a big difference for convective development. And uh, this is an area where a system like this will likely begin to show more organization later on unless it gets sheared to death, which again uh, is a little uncertain at this kind of range. Um, but uh, what we're seeing on the models today is, uh, for example, on the European here, showing the system initialized this morning. We go out a, a day, two days. This is by Saturday. You can see it hasn't strengthened much, and it actually begins to lose some latitude. It's pretty far north as it is, uh, but this ridge builds into its north, and so we see it move due west or even west-southwest for a couple days. So by Sunday, you see it here, and then on Monday morning, it's moving due west and uh, it's uh, due east now of the northern Leeward Islands. And it's not out of the question that this actually dips far enough south to impact the islands at some point, but this is four, five, six days away. Here's day five and day six, and you can see it begins to strengthen and therefore turns west-northwest as it rounds the ridge. Uh, and begins to move away from the islands. Uh, but at six days out, that's not much of a distance here, uh, not much of a margin for error. So it's it's not impossible that this comes far enough south to impact the islands. But that that is a difficult thing to expect for a storm this far north already. But we'll have to keep an eye on it uh, if for the folks in the islands in the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, beyond that, in the, the very long range, not worth discussing very much, but uh, simply to say that in this kind of 500 millibar pattern here, uh, the pattern aloft shows what could be an intensifying storm in a more favorable environment on the European. There's a break in the ridge here, but this ridge over the eastern U.S. is quickly coming eastward, and so there's a, a fork in the road that a system like this is going to have to face. It will either recurve quickly and strengthen, or it will remain weaker and perhaps even slip underneath this ridge as it comes farther uh, east over the Western Atlantic. And then we have to talk about the trough behind that ridge. And all of this is highly uncertain at a week plus in the future. And uh, I can't answer any questions about whether this will affect land farther west here. It's just way too early to say. Uh, right now, uh, the only focus will really be on the Lesser Antilles, as this could, again, potentially get close enough uh, to be in the forecast area here in a few days. Uh, but we're still a ways out from that. This is the National Hurricane Center official track showing again kind of a west-southwest track and then turn back toward the west-northwest, but perhaps close enough to the Lesser Antilles, a little too close for comfort here. We'll see how far south it actually dips over the next few days. Still some uncertainty in the details. Again, it keeps it pretty weak and then shows it intensifying at the end of the period a little bit more, given conditions expected to become more favorable. And uh, at this time of the year, once this gets going, uh, it wouldn't take that much for it to become a hurricane at some point in its life, and we may be watching this storm for well over a week, given where it is now. It'll have a long journey across the Atlantic, and we'll see if it affects any land areas during that time, but if it does so, it's still several days off, so lots of time to watch this system. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.